Hi, Gary Stearman coming to you from the studios, Prophecy Watchers, and in studio with us today is an old friend, and somebody you know, you've seen him many times, Avi Lipkin from Israel. Hi, Avi. Great to be back. It's always great to have you back, and one of the reasons we love to talk to you is because you live in Israel. You live, in fact, tell people where you live exactly, relative to Jerusalem. Okay, well, I live in a little town called Kedar. Kedar is really a bedroom subdivision of Male Adumim. Mm -hmm. Male Adumim is actually a, 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 what they call a settlement, but it's, it's a city. It's 40,000 yeah. people, uh, halfway between Jerusalem and the northern tip of the Dead Sea. And we are on Highway 1, right off of Highway 1. Uh, we're about 20 minutes from Jerusalem driving and mm -hmm. about half an hour driving from the Dead Sea. Uh, and we have a beautiful desert. And, you know, you can drive for hours in the United States through the deserts or mountains, and the, the, the topography doesn't really change. In Israel, you go from the coast, which is like Houston, you go to the, the hills, which is like the hill country, in Jerusalem, which is like hill country, and then you go down the other side of Jerusalem and you're in the desert, like you're in a Phoenix, Arizona, or, or New Mexico, and then you have the Dead Sea, which is like Salt Lake, you know? And uh, it's all of that is like in, within one, one hour of driving. Things happen fast. It's a microcosm. <laughs> it is. And uh, Israel is a beautiful country. I think Israel is the safest country. My son Aaron has Lipkin tours, and he brings a lot of Christian and Messianic groups to Israel, and of course Jewish. He even brings Muslims to Israel. But uh, he's very busy, and the land is very, very uh, attractive uh, for people from all faiths. Now, I wanted Avi to tell you where he lives, just a from the point of view of his perspective, because he's going to talk about things that we, we wonder about here in America. We hear about the Saudis. We hear about uh, the Iranian Ayatollahs. And we read about them in the news, but we really, we're far enough away from all this that we really can't quite figure out what's going on. Give us a kind of a thumbnail of how you see uh, events developing in Israel right now. Okay. Uh, firstly, um, as you know, we're in the midst of a, a new election, second elections within six months. And there are fears in Israel we might become like Italy. If you remember, mm, there was a I, time I do. that in 60 years they had 60 elections. And yeah. it's very, very unstable because it's coalition politics. And it's very hard uh, to, uh, uh, to pastor you know, a completely wild sheep. They were going off in all different directions. <laughs> and, uh, but that's the situation in Israel. At the same time, while we're fooling around with all this coalition politics, there are enemies around us who want to attack us, they want to attack America, and they want to attack each other. So like we're in the middle of crazy, crazy time here. But actually in Israel it's very safe. Now the problem in the Middle East, which has always been the problem, other than their hatred for the Jews and the Christians, the Muslims, they hate each other. And you have an incessant 1,400 year war between Shiites and Sunnis. Okay. Now, the U.S. backs the Sunnis. The Shiites are backed by the Russians. Now, it's not because the Russians are horrible people or the Americans are horrible people. It's, very, it's about business interests. America provides 90% of the weapons flowing into the Middle East. Russia has a very small market, 10%. And that market is Iran, Syria, and, of course, the, the Shiites. Uh, on the other hand, I'll tell you honestly, I know the Russians. I was a Sovietologist. And the Russians don't really like the Muslims so much. But if you can use the Shiites against the Sunnis, especially the Turks, that's the deal. And if you can sell them weapons, that's the deal. But when they come to attack Israel, and the Iranians and the Shiites from Syria, then Russia and Israel have some kind of an agreement hmm. where Israel warns the Russians and says, listen, these people are shooting missiles at Israel. Israel must defend itself get your Russian soldiers out of that area on such and such a day and such and such a time because that area is going to be erased. And we take out the Iranians and we take out the Shiites and some Syrian soldiers, unfortunately, because they're all allies. But in my view, in my opinion, the real enemy of Israel is the Sunnis. Now you might say, well, yeah, but the Saudis want Israel as an ally. Yeah, the Saudis... But let me back up just one yeah. second for clarity here. Iran, Shiite, am I correct? Correct. And we think of, it, of Iran as the real threat. And you're, you're saying, wait a minute, let's look at it a different way. Yeah, and don't forget that Iran was the best friend in the Muslim world that the Jews and the Israelis had until 1979. Hmm. And there was this radical change in which all of a sudden Iran became the big enemy. 
And as the noose is tightening around the necks of the Iranians, President Trump is doing a very good job with this. Uh, it might be, probably will be, that the Iranians will employ their proxies to attack Israel, which would be Hezbollah in Lebanon, Hamas in Gaza, uh, and Shiite terrorists everywhere in the world. Um, but th this is going to be in their death throes. And uh, this is really a pity, because the real enemy is not the Shiites. Uh, the real enemy will be the Sunnis. Who do you know who are the Sunnis? ISIS, okay? ISIS is not some kind of strange phenomenon. ISIS is pure Orthodox Islam. Uh, Al-Qaeda, we've all heard of Al-Qaeda, 9-11. Sure. Uh, Jabhat al-Nusra. There are all these different crazy, crazy Islamic groups, but they represent the true Islam. And these people want to kill all the Shiites in Syria. They want to kill all the Christians in Syria and Lebanon. They want to kill all the Druze in Syria and Lebanon. The Christians and the Druze are our allies. So we should be aligned with the Christians and the Druze and the Shiites. The Shiites in Syria are only 10%. But they're being bossed around by the fanatic Shiites coming from Iran and Hezbollah. Uh, and like I said before, this is a war of extermination. And either one side, the Shiites get totally exterminated, or the Shiites and the Sunnis exterminate each other. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not happy about anybody mm -hmm. exterminating anybody. The United States backs the Sunnis. Okay, now Saudi Arabia has a king, does business with America. Uh, United States has always been close to Saudi Arabia. Sure. Um, but ISIS wants to kill the king of Saudi Arabia and turn Saudi Arabia into the caliphate. The caliphate is destroyed in Syria and Iraq, but it's not destroyed yeah. uh, by the public opinion of Jordan or Saudi Arabia. 80% of Jordan is pro-ISIS. In other words, one bullet kills the king of Jordan, Jordan tomorrow is ISIS. One bullet kills the king of Saudi Arabia and another bullet kills his son, Saudi Arabia becomes ISIS. Uh, this will mean the destruction of the oil producing wells. It'll mean the blocking of the Straits of Hormuz. It'll mean the destruction of the world economy. You're saying that we're on a sort of a knife edge. Things could happen fast. Double-edged sword. Wow, double-edged sword, the sword of Islam, I yeah. suppose. You know, one of the things about America is, it, it, I say it is a blessing, but sometimes a blessing turns into a curse. America is so blessed. You've got two oceans, Atlantic and Pacific, on either side. You've got the Canadians, who are, forgive me for saying it, they're really Americans. They think they're <laughs> Europeans, but they're really Americans. <laughs> then you've got the Mexicans and the Latinos to the south, who people say, well, we don't want them, but they're Christian. They're hard workers. They're not coming to America to destroy America. The terrorists are. That's why you need a wall. Um, and, and, and American news is fluff. And then you have Wall Street, then you have the weather, then you have sports, and that's it. That's, that's your news, and you're not really supposed to know anything. And that's why you're here. That's why I'm here. Because I, will, I want you to, to alert us to what to look for, as, as to what to look for in the news, in the papers, wherever we get our news. What should we be watching in Israel? Well, I think, like I said before, and we have done a show on this, uh, I think that what's happening in Israel today is the demography is going in the direction of the ultra-Orthodox. They're the ones who are having 5, 10, 15 children per family. Uh, the leftists, the liberals, as we spoke about yeah. last time, they have maybe one child and one dog. And a lot of their kids smoke pot and take drugs, and then they leave Israel because they're leftists. They don't believe in God. If you don't believe in God, you have no business being in Israel because you might as well just go to Germany or America or France or any other country to make money. Uh, so the people who stay in Israel are those who believe in God, which is a good thing. But when the ultra-Orthodox dominate the religious scene, this is dangerous to the future of Israel. Wow. Coming from the lips of Avi Lipkin, who lives uh, just outside of uh, Jerusalem and walks on Israeli soil. And he, uh, I think you breathe uh, the things that are happening there today. The rest of us watching from a distance uh, often cannot figure out what's going on. And that's why I love to hear you talk. Thank you. And that's why I live. Because I think God is saying to me, you're the watchman on the tower. And if you see the sword coming, which I do, go out and warn the people. Blow the shofar, sound the alarm. Ezekiel 33, verse 6. Finally, as, as we close, uh, American Christians. What should American Christians be praying for? And you, speaking as a Jew, what would you like to see American Christians pray for uh, relative to Israel? Well, firstly, that America has to remain a Judeo-Christian Bible country. 
In other words, it, it, it has been shifting away for decades. For Israel, that Israel be a traditional Jewish country with love in its heart for Christians and people who are not necessarily what the ultra-Orthodox rabbis want them to be. Because the ultra-Orthodox rabbis want to shut the country to anyone who's not one of them. They want to have total control over the economy and over the, uh, the people. Uh, so Israel is facing a cultural war between the ultra-Orthodox and everybody else. Avi Lipkin, you've heard it here, and uh, when he talks, he speaks from the heart, as you can tell. And, and I love to talk to you because uh, we cut through the clouds uh, of the news, and sometimes uh, the things you say let me hit us a little bit hard. And really, is that true? And, and if Avi says it, it's, it's exactly what he believes. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And also, people need to get the books and DVDs because this is the way to support me and my party while we're running. We do feature Avi's uh, uh, books, seven books, uh, a couple of DVDs, actually three DVDs and maybe more. But uh, when you purchase uh, Avi's uh, products, it helps him with the Bible Block Party back in Israel. Amen. Have a great day. You too. In the Lord. And, and may he All go before you in your travels. Amen. Thank you. Save travels and God save America, God save Israel. Amen. I'm Gary Stearman. You keep watching. We are. Thanks for joining us on Prophecy Watchers. You can find us on the web at prophecywatchers.com where you can sign up for our free email newsletter. In the meantime, keep watching everybody and we'll see you soon.